Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Known for its championships on the hardwood and its thoroughbreds on the racetrack. But tonight, there's a new show in town. The undefeated UK Wildcats football team. They've already stiff-armed the Gators. Kentucky fans can excel. Finally, the streak is dead. It's been a long time coming. But can they match the physicality of the Bulldogs? A true test of size and strength. It's Mississippi State in Kentucky. SEC football is next. <laughs> oh, that poor horse. From Keeneland over to Kroger Field. You're watching the SEC on ESPN as we welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime. Both unbeaten, Mississippi State and Kentucky with no less than 10 NFL draft prospects on the field tonight. We had some pushing and shoving already and some chatter from a couple of All-American candidates and Benny Snell and Jeffrey Simmons. They should get to know each other quite well on the field tonight. Lot on the line for the Wildcats as they look to go to 2-0 in the SEC for the first time since 1977. side the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. They lost the last time they were up here, but they have owned this rivalry of late. Winners of eight of the last nine in the series. And we welcome you to the Commonwealth. I'm Beth Mullins along with Anthony Becht. Of course, you've always seen, already seen Rocky the Jockey over at Keeneland. We've got a terrific matchup tonight of a couple of undefeateds. And the thoroughbreds that really are the horsepower between these two, behind these two teams, yeah. Anthony, are their quarterbacks, Nick Fitzgerald and Terry Wilson. Yeah, we know Tua Tungabaloa. We know the Jake Fromms of the world. But pay attention to the two quarterbacks in this game today. And it starts with Mississippi State's Nick Fitzgerald. It's documented, folks. We know this kid can run the football. Over 2,500 yards of rushing in his career. But enter Joe Moorhead and his passing offense, and he has become a weapon with his arm. And on the other side for Kentucky, Terry Wilson. This kid's come on the map now. He ran by every single Gators player versus Florida. He's got speed, and he can't be stopped. And in the passing game, he's growing and he's becoming a better passer with every throw. This is a great matchup of two dynamic quarterbacks, Beth, that should be a good show between Mississippi State and Kentucky. 80 touchdowns. Fitzgerald has been responsible, making his 28th start at Mississippi State. Just the fourth career start for Terry Wilson tonight at ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Sonic's Car Hop Classic. Get a quarter pound double cheeseburger or a slinger plus tots for just $2.99. And Expedia, everything you need to go. A chilly, rainy evening here in Lexington, Kentucky, but Big Blue Nation out in force for a very big ball game. Trying to get to 4 and 0 on the season against undefeated Mississippi State. The Bulldogs deferring after winning the toss. So we will get to see that matchup right away between Benny Snell and this highly touted Bulldog defensive front. Scott Goodman will kick it off for Mississippi State. It is short. And Lynn Bowden Jr. will have a chance to return, and he'll bring it out to the 33-yard line, and he's wrapped up there after a return of 23 yards. So here comes Benny Snell, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons, but his career low was against State last year, held to just 18 yards. Yeah, he's a dynamic back. The Yak King, Beth, yards after contact. You'll see defenders bounce off his legs. He has great patience as he looks for the holes open up, and he is an aggressive, reckless runner. We'll see if he can do that today. Averaging 125 yards per game, second best in the SEC behind Travion Williams at AM. 
And Snell will get the call. And Ruben is ready. Right across the 40. Able to stay on his feet for some of that yak, Anthony. He made Cameron Danzler miss. I don't know if I've met a more confident player than Benny Snell Jr. This kid believes in what his talents are. He understands he's a workhorse. He's not afraid to talk a little trash, and he backs it up on the field. That may have been the exchange pregame with Simmons, 94, and Montez Sweat, number nine. The two guys to watch up front. Snell will get it again, and he's got a first down. Out close to midfield. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. And we already talked about Snell. He's a weapon. Lynn Bowden is the top receiver on this team. Now, on the defensive side, Jeffrey Simmons, Montez Sweat. These guys are top 15 NFL players, Beth. Watch them as Simmons holds the point and Sweat rushes on the outside. Those two guys are tied for the SEC lead and tackles for loss with five and a half each. And I think we've had... Another exchange between the two teams. There was some pushing and shoving a scuffle pregame tonight. C.J. Conrad is the tight end. He'll actually take a couple of steps into the backfield. Terry Wilson on the run, keeps his head downfield and will chuck it into the bench. Let's check in with Rocky Boyman. Yeah, Beth, you already saw some scuffling going back and forth. It seems that UK is trying to go Jeffrey Simmons. He was the guy they attacked in, during the pregame, and right there during that exchange, a couple of the offensive linemen, like they're trying to get inside his head, maybe trying to get him to do something stupid down the line here. We have to find a way to block him. That's the first thing because Number he wrecks. A, he will wreck a game, and he's done that so far early in the season. Trips to the short side of the field for Kentucky. And Terry Wilson, the junior college transfer, winning the starting job at quarterback, and a big reason why is his speed, unable to show it there because of Montez Sweat. Well, here we go. The first third down opportunity for this young quarterback. Bob Shoup, the coordinator for Mississippi State, loves pressures. He bought 20 straight pressures versus his first opponent, Stephen F. Austin. Let's see what he dials up today to challenge the young quarterback. They go with just the three-man rush. Wilson with time. Looking downfield incomplete. Intended for Richardson. It was Montez Sweat that finally got around to get a little heat on him in his fourth down. Well, what do you do when you do 20 straight blitzes in the first game of the season and scare your quarterback? You drop eight guys on the first third down. Third and long, obviously, they're going to test him as a passer. They're going to try and see if he can make a mistake in the passing game right there. Under throws the ball. Mississippi gets off, State gets off the field. The Australian punter Max Duffy to boot it in the direction of Keith Mixon. And it will go over Mixon's head. And down into the end zone. 49 yards. It sat there for a moment, but couldn't get a blue jersey around it. So the first possession now for Mississippi State and Nick Fitzgerald, the three-year starter, third in SEC history with 35 rushing and passing touchdowns. Only Tim Tebow and Dak Prescott with more. 230-pound quarterback. He loves to run. He's a powerful runner. He is in control of this offense. Joe Moorhead has given him the responsibilities at the line of scrimmage. The question is, can he read the coverages? In this passing game for Mississippi State, he has to read high, low safeties, corners, coverage, see if he can make some hay on offense. He'll hand it off. Kylan Hill, the sophomore who won the starting job from Aris Williams in the preseason. There is a flag down. Hill already has a 200-yard rushing game under his belt this season. Doing a little lip reading. I believe that was the tight end, Justin Johnson. And the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty 
with the weather, Beth, getting pushed back like this, long yardage situations. You don't want to have issues because you're forced to maybe pass and do some things out of your element as this crowd tries to put pressure on the offense. Fitzgerald to throw and the completion out to the 16-yard line to Johnson. Cash Daniel with the tackle. Let's check into the studio, Chris. Wow, ODU putting the heat on a power five opponent right there. Third and 14 here for Mississippi State. Allen trying to get to the quarterback, and it's thrown away by Fitzgerald. That appeared to be an alignment holding Josh Allen there on the, on the rush. No flag down. Yeah, soft, down. sophomore Reese on the outside here. Watch his pass rush. Josh Allen is one of those NFL prospects. Great pass rush, gets outside. That looks like a hold to me. Nick Fitzgerald very lucky on this play, but they force the pressure and get them to throw the ball out of bounds. That's a heck of a job to start this game by Kentucky. And, Anthony, I thought watching Allen throughout the week, he has one of the best first steps of a pass rusher I've seen all season. Wildcats get away from it. And a couple of Mississippi State bounces down to the 43-yard line and a 41-yard punt. A feisty start for the undefeated Cats and Dogs. What else would you expect? He is the eighth new Kentucky quarterback in the last nine years, and it took a moment or two for Terry Wilson to get here. Coming out of Oklahoma City, the sixth-rated dual-threat quarterback in the class of 2016. He started out at Oregon, redshirted. It wasn't the right fit for him. He went the Juco route and then arrived here, transferring to Kentucky. And he has started out 3-0, looking to join uh, Mark, uh, Mike Hartline, rather, as a winner in his first four games at quarterback here at UK. Tough test tonight against 14th-ranked Mississippi State. Wow, room for Benny Snow, and what a start for the All-American candidate down inside the 35 and a run of 22 yards. I think he's backing it up a little bit early in this game, Beth. This kid's taking off this offensive line. He did a nice job early against this Mississippi State attack. Nice patience there, and he turned on the Jets. Nice run. Averaging 12 yards a carry. He'll make a block on Sweat. That will allow Wilson to get down inside the 30 and gain five. Yeah, last run right here. Can you block number 94, Simmons? Watch for Kentucky getting a washed out, double teams. All Snell needs is a small crack, Beth. He's got great vision, and he's able to stick his foot in the ground and get up the field. He's a dangerous runner, and try to tackle him low because he will bounce off defenders. Logan Stenberg, Drake Jackson, Bunchy Stallings, those three guys in the middle for Kentucky up front. Trying to clear another path for Benny Snell, and it'll bring up third and short. And more unpleasantries exchanged. Uh, I'm sure you can see this, Rocky, but it looks like Simmons is starting to get aggravated a little bit. It's hard to see him push some guys late. Let's see who they catch. I think it's going to be on Kentucky, but I, you're right. They're definitely trying to get in Simmons' head, as I said earlier, a little psychological warfare, but it may have backfired here. The flag came late with one of the officials talking to Logan Stenberg. Well, it's always the second guy, right, Beth? So, you know, when you watch these things, that, that's important to think about. 71. Well, the microphone obviously not working for referee Hubert Owens tonight. Yeah, Logan Stenberg is the guilty culprit. 71 is the left guard. He's he's dry blocking right here in the middle. He pushes, then he gets pushed. 
Actually, Simmons wasn't involved with that. I, I take that back. It was, it was another defender. So it's getting feisty. And again, you don't want to have these penalties, Beth, because you know what? Now you're third and long, and your offense is in deep trouble. This is exactly what they were looking to avoid. These third and long situations, and down goes the quarterback. Out across the 50, it's Chauncey Rivers with the sack. And a loss of eight, fourth down. We're going to see up to 12 different defensive linemen coming in off the rush. Watts, number five, right here, Rivers, just come in. Try blocking them. That, that's a good thing first. Nobody gets a missed assignment. Listen, when you're playing offensive line and you're in the box, Biggs got to block Biggs right there. A crucial mistake by the interior line of Kentucky. Duffy's second punt. Mixon with the fair catch. And we got a flag down at the line of scrimmage. As it stands, a 40-yard punt. Looks to be a false start on Kentucky. Christy Thomas. Illegal formation. So if you're Mississippi State, you got it with 9.03 to go here in the first. ESPN College Football, brought to you by DirecTV. More for your thing, that's our thing. And Audi. Pre-game catwalk and Benny Snell doing some running tonight as well. Four carries, 39 yards. But our break breakdown is about the guy on the other side, Fitzgerald. The, the dangers of the quarterbacks, the triple option. If you decide to take the running back, you better make sure you have Fitzgerald. He'll gut you in the run game. And then when you decide to take Fitzgerald, you better make sure you have somebody on the running back. They don't do that. And there's another option, Bet The third phase is the pass. Fitzgerald to Hill. Breaking tackles, and he'll work his way out close to the first down. And let's go back to that final thing for Fitz. Yeah, the last phase of the triple option. It's an extension, the horizontal phase. Pull it, tuck it, show your runs, get the DBs to come up, and then you toss it down the sidelines for a big play. He can beat you a lot of different ways. He's very good. And this more has Moorhead pass system is explosive as well. And at a lot of different tempos for Mississippi State on second and one, some movement. And that's going to be, uh, be Greg Island, the left tackle. Offense, number 55, five-yard penalty, second down. There is a look at the first-year head coach, Joe Moorhead. Success at pretty much every stop he's made along the way. He is trying to become the first head coach at Mississippi State to open up his career 4-0. And he finds his Bulldogs ranked 14th in the country. They were talking this morning on game day. This may be the top contender to Alabama in the SEC West. They got something to prove tonight. Austin Williams with the catch. West tackled him after a two-yard game. And that was a perfect example of what we just showed you guys of sucking some defenders down, pulling it out, and throwing it quick to the sidelines. This offense is putting in the hands of Fitzgerald. Now on third down, what's the attack plan for, for Kentucky? Last week, they dropped everyone. This week, see how they come after Fitzgerald. It's important right here, Kentucky, get after the quarterback where they don't get too far upfield, open up the rush lanes in the middle for Fitzgerald. Pressure coming, Fitzgerald comes in incomplete. Jordan Jones, the linebacker, got a hand around the midsection of Nick, and it's fourth down. These two linebackers. Cash Daniel, 56. These guys are going to come around and get in the face of the quarterback, and that's going to be important. It's a little cross. Right there, you see 34 Jones make a big play, just making the quarterback speed up in his process. Bouvier, the fair catch signal. And Kentucky will have it at their own 38-yard line after a 40-yard punt. Scoreless so far in Lexington. 
Wow, Chris, a home game for the Monarchs right there. Old Dominion, a big win. Looks like the Big Ten took their hits last week. Looks like it's the ACC's Ooh. turn today yeah. with that game, Boston College and Louisville. Yep. BC lost for the first time. They were they just joined the rankings. Terry Wilson right into the arms of Jeffrey Simmons. Who's the second best? Who's the next best in the ACC right now? That, all of a sudden, that Syracuse game at Clemson, remember the Orange beat Clemson last year, all of a sudden that becomes a big game. It'll be interesting to see how it goes out. It doesn't help Clemson regardless when the conference is not winning football games to help them, being that they're the elite team of that conference. Trevor Lawrence had a massive game today. That quarterback discussion heats up at Clemson. Snell puts his head down and gets out to the 40. So here we go again with a third and long situation. Willie Gay with the tackle. I think it's important right here of Mississippi State. They're going to bring pressure. You got to play zone behind. It's hard to play man to man, hard to turn your back on a guy like Terry Wilson with his running ability. And if you're talking about pass rushers, guys, we're talking about number nine at the top of your screen there, Montez Sweat, one of the best in the country. Bringing some pressure right up the middle on Wilson and he overthrows Dorian Baker and several flags down after the hit on the quarterback. Leo Lewis got right into Wilson. Flags coming from in front of and behind that hit on the quarterback. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, this, this was close. You know, Leo Lewis is coming full speed in the middle, a little delay because they get a little zone blitz. To me, is it the, the driving them into the ground? I mean, this is a full speed linebacker coming at the quarterback, trying to time it up best he can. I don't know what else Lewis can do yeah. in that moment. Doesn't look like he pile drived him either on that play. So, look, that's a big hit. You need to pick him up because if he's coming free, those kind of hits are going to happen. Sets up Kentucky with the first down and keeps the drive alive now into Mississippi State territory. Wilson to Taven Richardson. And the catch down to the 41 yard line, a gate of five. Eddie Grant talked about Taven Richardson, said, Look, we got to get this guy the ball a little more. You know, he's a player that's produced for them in the past, and he hasn't been really on target this season. Beth, only one catch coming into the game, so he's a player they feel like that can help them in the pass game. Eddie, the offensive coordinator with Kentucky, they've had plenty of explosive plays. Both these sides have done well in that regard. Snell wrapped up by Sweat. Then he picks up a couple. This kid's impressive. 6'6", six, six, long arms. Rocky, I know you said you thought he looked like Jason Taylor in the spring game this year when you saw him play. Except he, we asked him about that, and he said, who's Jason Taylor? And I about fell out of my chair. I mean, he's only one of the best pass rushers ever. But uh, there's no question, long arm. He looks like a power forward out here. UK yet to convert a third down. Snell. And they'll convert that one. Bain stays on his feet to the 25-yard line. Errol Thompson saved the touchdown with the tackle. They love Benny. There's those marketing crew right there. Getting everybody for that Heisman chase. And I'll tell you, this young man on film, he has been as dynamic a running back as there is in the country, and especially the last two years. And he's off to a start, fast start right now. And offensive linemen love blocking for a guy that plays with that level of tenacity. Already way more yards rushing here in the first quarter than he had the entire game last season. They'll give it to him again. More for Benny, a flag down. Five yard gain as it stands. Holding, offense, number 52. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. And it won't stand up. Drake Jackson called for the hold. Yeah, he's the center and 
Listen, he's going to have tough duty is in this game today. He's going to be right over Simmons. This is the best defensive lineman, not in this game, but in college football. At least one of them in my eyes that I've seen. And sometimes when you can't get into him and he's pushing you back, you grab the outside of that jersey and pads and right there clear for the referee. Trips left. Wilson looking that way, and he'll tuck it and go. Sheds a defender and gets down inside the 30, back close to the original line of scrimmage. He'll run for eight. Well, first down passes, you get a four-man rush. What happens is there's a lot of creases. Eddie Grant, the coordinator, said, look, he's telling Terry Wilson, go to one, look at two, and take off. <laughs> get out of there. And when he sees those gaps, he's going to go. And again, it's an all-day fight for the center. Drake uh, Jackson and Simmons up front. Same thing for Mississippi State. They can rush, but they can't get too far upfield. You stall right there, open up the rush lane. He's going to take it all day long. He had a, over 100 yards rushing in that big win against Florida. The toss to Benny Snell. And, and you know, Rocky, when you're talking about rushing like that, you, you're taking away some of the, the true value of your defensive line. How do you border that line going either way? Fast rush, slow down, patience. Look at the advantage there for Kentucky in the first quarter. Got a third and 11 here. They need the 16-yard line for a first down. They need to get Lynn Bowden involved in this game. He's at the slot, bottom of the screen, now in motion. Wilson running all the way, and he's going to come up about a yard short. And Stoops will send out the field goal unit. Okay. He is fast. I'll tell you, he got through that line quickly. Leandres, I got to give him credit. That's a heck of a tackle. He just gets him around the waist to stop him from getting that first down. Miles Butler, two for two on the season. Not much wind right now, but a steady rain. See if it affects this kick. Both of those makes coming last week against Murray. State, this one a 36-yarder. No good. They've got the yardage, but not the points to show for it here in this first quarter. Still scoreless. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. You need to get this, folks. Get more ESPN and download now. Both undefeated, both high scoring, and both yet to get some points up on the board. Mississippi State, two possessions, two three and outs for a team coming in averaging 50 points per game and over 300 yards rushing. Four guys trying to get to Fitzgerald. And on the rollout, into the turf, incomplete. Looking for Stephen Gidry downfield, the leading receiver. No real identity, Beth. Like you said, two, three and outs. This team is built off the running game with the back and the quarterback. And now coming out on first down with the pass. A little bit of a different mix up, putting it on the quarterback. It's good coverage on the back end, but they got to find a way to get yards early on so they're not in these second, third deep. They have more penalty yards so far than total yards in this first quarter. Kentucky crowd getting into this one here. Fitzgerald. Gets four or five, Rocky? Yeah, just in terms of the energy, I think it's been on Kentucky's side this entire game after the missed kick, a bit deflating, but here during these last two plays and now on this third down is very loud on this UK sideline here. Pass rusher right here on the outside. Let's see if we can get some pressure on Fitzgerald. It's Josh Allen, number 41.
Blitz up the middle. State picks it up. Fitzgerald with time and a first down throw out to the 40. Osiris Mitchell in a gain of 15. One thing that comes up on tape is 26 Williams in his blitz pickup. Watch this as he jumps in front of this cross dog blitz and picks up the linebacker coming outside. It's Cash Daniels, one of their best, best blitzers. That gives Fitzgerald the time he needs to let that route, op route open because of the lack of defenders and coverage. Excellent job. That's Harris Williams, the senior who was the starter last year. You talk about a team guy doing whatever it takes to help out the ball club. And a big block there. And Gidry back to back first, uh, first downs for Fitzgerald. That's good for 12. Talk to my old teammate, Terrell Buckley. The great defensive back from Florida State. He's on the staff. I said, who's your best receiver on this team you go against every day? He said, Gidry's the man. He's got great speed. He can get the deep ball. He can catch balls underneath. He's a weapon right now. They're trying to get him the football early. Fitzgerald keeps. Got by Josh Allen down to the 40. It'll be second and short. Mike Edwards with the tackle. And that'll take care of the first quarter tonight on a rainy night in Lexington. Tempers flaring from pregame to in-game. Both undefeated and both looking to stay. Next stop, Mississippi State on the SEC Network. Always a big day when the nation comes to town. They will be in Starkville when Dan Mullen and the Gators return. Of course, Joe Moorhead hired to replace Mullen. And he's got Mississippi State at 3-0, and they're on the move right here. Their best drive of the night. Eris Williams wrapped up there, and we've got some weather issues down there, Rocky. Yeah, in the last two minutes, Beth, the, re the rain has really, really picked up. I've seen some of the U.K. players, they have those clear plastic shields on their face masks. Some of them have taken them off, and it's probably a good idea. The report is there may be some more substantial rain coming in right now. They'll stick with Aris Williams in the backfield offset. And a timeout call by Kentucky. The SEC on ESPN. Mississippi State, the fifth best rushing team in America. At over 300 yards per game, but not so far tonight. Just 15 yards on the ground. They need a couple here to keep the drive alive. It's because of these linebackers right now for Kentucky. Cash Daniel, Jordan Jones right in the middle. See if they can stuff them here if they decide to run. Harris Williams going to be close. Cash Daniel was the guy that made the tackle. The spot looks good for the Bulldogs. Looks like they got a good spot, but they might want to measure this yeah. one. Yellow line is an estimate. They are going to stop the clock here and bring the chains on. You know, Rocky, we were talking about linebacker Cash Daniel. What have you seen on film? He's very instinct. Doesn't have the great speed, but he is around the football constantly. Well, that's the thing, Anthony. You and I have both seen players that are super fast. They run the 4 threes, those linebackers, but they take two false steps the wrong way, and then you have to make up those steps. Cash Daniels is a guy, he reads the play, goes the right way, seems to always be taking the right steps out there. And I just think, you know, the, the linebackers in general are doing a good job of not letting that ball bounce outside here tonight so far. By a nose. First down, Mississippi State. They won't waste a whole lot of time getting a line here. Fitzgerald checking with more head to the sideline. Play fake. 
pressure coming. Fitzgerald gets away from it. Incomplete looking for Gidry. Able to extend the play as Watson missed a shot at him. Listen, the offense is on Fitzgerald. There's no more looking to the sidelines. You'll see 41 comes off the edge. He's got to pick it up fast because if he doesn't, he's not going to have time. Looks like he was a bit surprised of the pressure off the edge. Good job by Stoops dialing that one up. Boogie Watson couldn't quite get to him. Fitzgerald, five for nine so far, 43 yards. It's back to Kylan Hill now at tailback. Fitzgerald low on the throw, but it is hauled in by Mitchell, and it's going to bring up third and a couple after a, an eight-yard strike. Accuracy is the biggest issue with Fitzgerald over his career. That's something Joe Moorhead's trying to get better. Some early throws today, Beth, low into the ground. Some movement plays low. They're low. Let's see if they're good enough to get this third and two past this Kentucky defense. Formation here, a bunch on third down. Hill trying to catch the edge, and he'll get the first down on the cutback. Good block out there by Gidry as well as Green, the tight end, and a gain of seven. Well, you think up the middle, right, all the time. It's a fake to the running back, then the quarterback takes it. It's a good mix-up play there when you're doing your checking tendencies for offenses. That's a breaker, and they go outside and get, get the big first down. Nick Fitzgerald, the veteran, the three-year starter out of Richmond Hill, Georgia. His 28th career start. When all is said and done, Nick could be the top rushing quarterback in Southeastern Conference history. He's less than 200 yards away from passing Tim Tebow for that honor. And this is the similar offense that Trace McSorley, right, at Penn State run. Now, he wasn't six foot five. Now you're talking about a back when he runs the ball, 235 pounds, and he loves it, too. He's powerful. He gets his shoulders down. He is a tough tackle for defenses. He's got him on a 12-play drive that started back on their own 20 and now into the red zone. Stuart Reese, the back pedal. Ball start. Offense, number 51, five-yard penalty, second down. Guys, that's about the fifth time tonight I've seen UK's defensive line with some late pre-snap movement. That's something they've not shown at all that I've seen coming into this game. But you can tell they want to decrease those interior rush lanes, and right there it paid off with getting a penalty. And they're testing a certain lineman, right? The two sophomores, the tackles for this team, that's the youth part, the insides, the strength. Nice job by Kentucky. And a whistle. And zeros on the Delay good play. Offense, number seven. Five-yard penalty, second down. Moorhead's looking like he said it's never restarted for, the, for them after... That penalty, again, if you're a quarterback and you're a senior, you got to be aware of that. Right there, Nick Fitzgerald doesn't pay attention to the clock, pushes him back even farther. Second and 15, Fitzgerald forced to move again. And tracked down by Jordan Jones. It's going to be third and long. Got to find out where your best pass rusher is. And it's on the outside. You'll see him come out. He's not in your screen yet, but he's faking it. All of a sudden, here comes Josh Allen. You better get down. You're six foot eight at the left tackle position. And if you don't get your hips down and get out of your stance, it's going to be an all day fight with this kid. And you're going to lose a lot of those rounds. Stout D and the 12th man in full throat. Allen 
forcing Fitzgerald to step up, and he's got Gidry down to the two-yard line. First and goal, Bulldogs, as Steven got himself wide open. Well, Lonnie Johnson, the quarterback, quarterback here, just gets lost. Again, Nick Fitzgerald has to step up in the pocket, but where is Lonnie Johnson at? He just loses Gidry. That's a good concentration right on the sidelines to keep his feet in, but just a blown coverage by the senior. 24 yards to Gidry from the three. Fitzgerald all the way. Down to the one. Turned Kylan Hill into a blocker there, second and goal. Josh Allen right now is having a game. Early on, pass rushing, you're seeing him tackle the runs. You, per you turn the tape on for him as well. He's also in coverage, back cut on. He's a problem right now for Joe Moorhead in this offense. They gotta come up with something big here. Three rushing touchdowns already for Nick this year in the red zone, the most in the league. 15th play of the drive coming up. Fitzgerald again, touchdown Mississippi State. Fifth rushing TD of the year for Fitzgerald, capping a monster drive for the Bulldogs. 80 yards in over eight minutes. They needed something, Beth. It's kind of been a slow start for this offense. We haven't seen the explosive runs and passes like we did last week. It's a nice job by Mississippi State. Chase Christman with the PAT. It is good. 7-0. The lead for Mississippi State. It's almost unfair. When you get down to the 2 one yard line, it's tough to find. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And Applebee's to go. A nice moment for Coach Mark Stoops pregame with his son, Zach and Will. And a big night in Lexington. They win tonight. It's their first time in 41 years with back-to-back -back wins over ranked opponents. They beat number 25 Florida a couple of weeks ago, that historic win that ended their 31-game skid against the Gators. And now a couple of weeks later, their next ranked opponent is this Mississippi State team that just put the touchdown up on the run by Nick Fitzgerald. Kentucky has been able to churn it out, Anthony, with the run game of Benny Snell. Yeah, they set the tempo at the line of scrimmage. I mean, Benny Snell's backing up his talk, and they're doing it right in the gut of this defense, which is the strength of Mississippi State. The problem is that they have to excel in the red zone. They've gotten in between the 20s, but when they get in tight, they haven't been able to finish the deal. they got to find a way to do that on this drive. Eight carries, 55 yards for Benny. Making amends, at least trying to, for the game last year against Mississippi State. It was his career low, just 18 yards rushing against the Bulldog D. And this is A.J. Rose. Mark Stoops was telling us yesterday when we spoke to him, A.J.'s going to get the call uh, a few times tonight because we want to keep Benny fresh. Yeah, I mean, you can't give him every carry. I mean, obviously, there's intensity and the momentum and everything early in this game. you got to be able to work him and work some other players. And if they can get that dynamic and give him a break, it'd be dangerous. As a 100-yard rushing game and their win over Central Michigan. A nice stiff arm there by A.J. And he'll take it out across the 35 and a gain of 14. Can you use stiff arm? Watch this. You see Rose on the outside, right on the helmet. Push that down and get himself some extra yards. And if that happened right in front of me, I felt the speed of Rose to the sideline. Safety had the angle. He still got there. The direct snap to Rose. Tried to squirt to the outside and couldn't get there. Braxton Hoyette with the tackle. Yeah, you'll see Wildcat in this game. You'll see Snell do it. You'll see Rose. I asked Eddie Grant, I said, well, how do you know? How do you dictate? He's like, look, we don't care who's in there. Whoever can go out there and do it. I seem to think that maybe Rose can probably pass the ball a little better. So I don't know if that's coming. <laughs> but that may be due out of this Wildcat formation. That's the question. What is the wrinkle <laughs> going to be? A pass, double pass? We'll see. <laughs> 
Rain has led up for the time being here at Kroger Field. Wilson on second and long. Good protection. Drops it off underneath. It'll bring up third and about five. And with no Simmons in the game, well, now he's coming in the game. You saw the lack of pass rush in the middle. Had some more time. Now Simmons is coming back in off the sidelines. Let's see if that turns things up here on third down, Beth. We haven't seen a lot of pressure. Coach Shoup, the defensive coordinator, he brings it. Let's see if they change it up here on third and five. It's Bowden motioning out of the backfield. Pressure coming. Wilson flushed, and Wilson taken down. Montez Sweat got him low, and Hoyet finished him off. It's the second sack for the Bulldogs. Yeah, well, this is part of the pressure. You got to pick it up. You see these two backers coming in, but once it gets out there, Sweat does a nice job of just staying in location and pulling them down. He is one of the sack masters, not in the SEC, folks, in the country. Led the SEC in sacks last year with 10 and a half, and he's off to a great start this year. The year of the defensive linemen in college football, and Simmons and Sweat, two of the best. A loss of 14, forcing the Max Duffy punt. And that will bounce out around the 29-yard line. 7-0 Mississippi State. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the best student section of the year. The Kentucky Wildcats student section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. They have turned out in mass on a rainy night and a chilly night here in Lexington. And Mississippi State, that last drive impressive. 15 plays, 80 yards. They were four of four on third down. And it's back to Nick Fitzgerald and Kylan Hill working against Josh Allen and that Kentucky deep. Fitzgerald. Deep downfield in the miss. How about the day so far for Josh Allen? 6'5", 260 pounds. NFL prospects are looking at this guy. He's been a menace off the edge. But going against the young sophomore tackle, 6'8", hard for him to get down. And he's a factor in the run game as well, Rocky. This kid has been all over the field. Guys, I just love the fact he's a two-star recruit. He received one other offer to Monmouth College. So all you recruiting junkies out there that want to burn the coach's house down when they don't get 12 five-stars, Sometimes it's about developing a guy, and boy, has he developed. One of the top uh, active sackers in the country is Josh Allen. Standing on the left side of the line, number 41, Fitzgerald on the carry. And he gets out to the 34-yard line. It was Cash Daniel with the tackle and a gain of five. Cash goes at 240 pounds, Ben, and Nick Fitzgerald just drug him two yards. and. Here we go, another third down opportunity. We've seen the damage number 41 is done. He's going the other side now, right here, on the right side, and that's another sophomore, number 51, Reese. See if he can do a better job. Gerald, the pump across the middle, passed it up on the coverage. Darius West taking away what would have been a first down, and the punting unit will come on. He's trying to get Mixon across the middle, and look at this. Darius West does a nice job of timing up that hit right when the ball comes to him in the front. Mixon thought he had an easy catch, but he didn't feel that heat-seeking missile coming downhill. Great job of getting his head out of the tackle as well, and not getting a penalty. Tucker Day punts it away. Bouvier going to let it drop, and it takes a Kentucky bounce back out to the 43-yard line. To the studio now, and Chris Cotter.
Felipe Franks into double digit touchdown throws already this season. Wilson dumps it off to Conrad as tight end and the Bulldogs were all over it. Mark McLaurin coming up from the secondary. One yard loss there, second and 11. Benny Snell is offset. He does not have a yard rushing in this second quarter. After picking up 55 in the first. Wilson. Incomplete just out of the reach of Dorian Baker. There's still scuffling in the middle of the field, Beth. I mean, it, it has gone on now for two quarters. This team's got to get dialed in. The adrenaline, obviously, early in the game, but now you're in the second quarter of the heat of the battle. I think that was Snell and Simmons, John, again. It's third and 11. Kentucky has converted just once tonight. Setting up the screen incomplete. And Mississippi State forces the punt. They were bringing a little pressure there, and it looked like it would have been a good call, but Wilson not able to have the accuracy there on that quick throw. And that's a one, two, three hitter right there. You're out. I mean, Kentucky's got to find a way now. After starting hot, Beth, coming yeah. back and getting something generated offensively, it's getting kind of quiet for the blue right now. They've turned Terry Wilson into a passer. And it hasn't been pretty, just three of seven for 10 yards through the air. And a big hit down at the 10 yard line. After the 46 yard punt, great coverage for Kentucky and Zach Johnson. Can you bring the thump perfectly timed up? Excellent shot by special teams being a factor. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Who's in for the college football playoff? It's uh, been a good weekend so far for the ranked teams. Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, the top four teams in the rankings all showing well today. First and 10 for 14th ranked Mississippi State. It's going to be a false start. There it is again. Priest not moving. Drew it. False start. Tonight. 55 is feeling a little pressure because he's got 41 Josh Allen on the outside of him. I mean, listen, that would make me nervous too. I mean, look at it. He's thinking missile. Josh Allen's all over it, the senior. He's look, he's taking every advantage he can. And if he can sell it to the ref, the officials, he'll get it. He's moving up both McShay and Kuiper's draft boards. The first round pick expected for Josh. Fitzgerald out of his own end zone. Busted up. Gidry had it, and Derek Beatty jarred it loose. The secondary is very impressive for Kentucky. A lot of experience, Beth. All these guys are on NFL radars because of their length. They're 6'3". And when you have Gidry 6'4", this becomes a premium matchup. Gidry tries to go up high, but it's tough. The one thing Nick Fitzgerald has tried to work on is his touch. Tried to strong arm that one up high. Baby, the star out of Plant High School down in Tampa. He's been a starter all four years. He's been here at Kentucky. They'll try the ground game. Kylan Hill gets out to the six. It's going to bring up third down. They need to get out to the 20 for the first down. Guys, I am down here in this end zone. It is very, very loud. It's going to be tough for Fitzgerald to communicate anything. Lots of fans in blue screaming. for Fitzgerald across the middle it's going to be short of the first down out to the 15 yard line Darius West and Jordan Jones made a play and they forced the punt 
Penalties pushes you back. It's tough to convert. Second, third, and longs. Right there, they just get back in coverage, rush four, get the early, the short dump pass, and then make the tackle up front. What you got for us, Chris Cotter? Fantastic, Chris. Thank you very much. Buckeyes now can turn their attention completely to Penn State in the whiteout in Happy Valley next week, and Alabama continues to burrow. Speaking of a whiteout, my man Connor's rocking a serious <laughs> hanky today. That's a, the hanky game times five. I like it. Mississippi State, four of their five drives tonight have been three and out. Their scoring drive was the 80-yarder capped by the Fitzgerald touchdown run and two teams coming into this game tonight with impressive run games and both scoring over 30 points per game it's been the defense is showing out so far they really have you know kentucky came out strong running the football kind of setting the tempo of this game but mississippi state has calmed that down we haven't seen much out of kentucky and mississippi state starts slow and then now their offense is generating this has been a defensive battle. I really love these kind of games. We haven't seen defenses step up in the, in the SEC and really take control. They have done that today for both teams. It's been fun to watch. There was a flag on the punt for an illegal formation. Of course, what's at stake for Kentucky? They have not been 2-0 and oh in the SEC since 1977. They already have the upset of Florida down at the Swamp. And, of course, for Mississippi State, oh, would they love a 4-0 record to go home next week to see the Gators and Dan Mullen in primetime Saturday night. And approaching the final two minutes of this first half. How aggressive will this offense get? Under two minutes now. No yards on first down. What can Terry Wilson produce? Wilson looking for a lane. Darts to the outside down to the 42-yard line. Good block by Logan Stenberg and a gain of seven clock stopped, 144 to go. Rocky, you played against quarterbacks like Michael Vick. What's the coaching point when you got a guy as fast as Wilson on the edge? It's hang on for dear life. <laughs> you can do everything right. That's so frustrating about running quarterbacks. You do everything right, you're in the right coverage, and then a guy with his athleticism just break ones. It's absolutely crushing for a defense. Benny Snell with a good block. And Wilson checks down inside the 31st down. Ran for 13 there. You saw it right there. Mississippi State had everyone covered up. There's a little bit of a crease. Terry Wilson took it first down. Yeah, Montez Sweat, you see him number nine. He, he put his arms up. He thought he was held on the back end of this. I see hands inside, though. That's, that's good for the offensive lineman. And you leave that hole, Wilson will find it. Benny Snell, his first yardage of this second quarter. Gary Green with the tackle. They'll let the clock run down. Second and seven. Officials are going to talk down at the two-yard line. Baker is the deep threat. They change it, Anthony, and rule it a catch. He is the deep threat weapon for this team. Watch his feet. Watch the concentration. One arm. Does he have it completed? Two feet. Question is, is it? Does he have a possession into his body, and is it complete? I think the one foot's down. And then the scrape even with a second foot. Yeah, they may look at this because of if, if the ball's in full control, but right now, I think getting shot down. If I'm Kentucky, I snap the ball here. Let's go. 23-yard gain, first and goal. Snell, touchdown, Cats! Yeah. 
The Rockies said go, and they went. Moorhead decides not to call timeout and delay this to get this thing looked at. Kentucky takes advantage, Beth. I think that's a critical error. You got to call a timeout there and get some more time to look at that play. Miles Butler to tie it up. And he does. 50 seconds to go in the half, and the Cats draw even. Yeah, again, it's just, does he have the ball controlled in his hands? We see two feet, but is it controlled? One arm, looks like it's against his body, two feet down. That, that looks a lot That's better good. there yeah. when we see it. And I'll tell you, I credit this Kentucky offensive line. They're doing a great job of creating some holes. This is a challenge today going against this Mississippi State defensive line. One of the best in the country, and they have met that challenge. And I think he had the ball too, Anthony, but I mean, Mississippi State has three timeouts left. You can't take them in the halftime. Don't you just burn one right there and make the referees look at it one more time? Exactly. I, I, why not, right? I mean, you take that chance. Huge play. That's a momentum swing potentially going into halftime. And those are the two guys, the poise of Terry Wilson and that two-minute drill. Nine carries tonight. He's uh, four of eight through the air, but some good poise. And then the handoff to Snell to finish the drive. There were some pyrotechnics after the TD, and they have managed to just sit right down in the bowl here at Kroger Field. Some indecision, and now Mississippi State will bring it out. Brian Cole has managed to get back out to the 20 yard line. We'll kick off the NFL season at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN with Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. They'll have the story on Patrick Mahomes' journey to the NFL. Plus, Dak Prescott will sit down to discuss how he draws inspiration from an 18 year old artist who was born with no arms. And then bring on Monday, Anthony. You're going to be there live. I will. In person, Steelers, Bucks. Thank and you. from Fitzgerald to Fitzpatrick and Ryan. Unbelievable. I mean, Fitz, Fitzpatrick <laughs> has been the best quarterback in the NFL. I can't wait to watch that matchup against the Steelers. 40 seconds for Nick Fitzgerald. Gets the pass to the outside, but Mitchell had to go down on a knee to make the catch. Clock moves. A lot of low passes. Again, that's probably four on my count on his accuracy so far on the throw. They choose not to use one of their three timeouts there, and they lose 10 seconds off the clock. Fitzgerald going to run it. Short yardage. Adrian Middleton with the tackle. And again, you know, I, I'm not a fan of bagging timeouts, and you know, they're going to take one of them right now. Two timeouts remaining for Mississippi State. Ten seconds on the clock. Well, our day in college football, Georgia continues to show they are the class of the SEC East. Jake Fromm, three touchdown throws. Boy, what a rough start for Scott Frost at Nebraska. They have not been this bad since World War II. After a, a tough loss today to Michigan, and then Tua with another big day, Anthony. Four touchdown tosses. He's been great. I mean, he's been the best quarterback right now, the most consistent quarterback week in and week out. But, you know, me and Rock, Rocky, we were watching that Georgia game, and opportunities all over the place for Mizzou, but they kicked themselves in the butt on turnovers and little things that special teams errors. Georgia takes advantage of that. You cannot do that against a top team like Georgia. Well, you're right. That's the lesson there with Georgia is they can beat you so many ways. You just cannot afford to give the other team, you know, or give them one more possession, one more look at it. So they are fast, they are tenacious, and they look really, really good today. Georgia will be here in the Commonwealth in early November. Mississippi State does not have them on the schedule. Be nice to see Nick Fitzgerald get a ball about 15 to 12 yards in the middle of the field. With the timeouts also, they can get, he's got a big arm. He can definitely get it to the end zone. So if he can get 15 more yards here in the middle of the field, they may have a chance. The numbers tonight on Nick. And he does have the one rushing touchdown from a yard out. 
Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, he's been a guy that's trying to improve his passing game, but his accuracy, some of these passes that he had, been low, been completing, but he's doing a nice job of just dishing it. We know how good he is as a rusher. And I think, to me, I really haven't seen the best of him today. We, we know what he can bring to the table, but it hasn't been a great flow for Mississippi State's offense. They had a nice drive a couple series ago, but overall, Kentucky's done a nice job of really holding it down and bringing pressure and confusing them. State came in here averaging 50 a game. A different story tonight between these two unbeatens. Three-man pressure, Fitzgerald has a man open to the outside. Mitchell steps out of bounds to stop the clock with four seconds to go just across midfield. They picked up 21 there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, you got four seconds here. Now you got a shot to the end zone. No rush here. Let's get everybody lined up perfectly. Get your throw to the end of the half, and they're going to take a timeout. Talk about that. So you have your big, tall receivers on one side to potentially catch a deep throw. The discussion on UK's sideline is do not let anybody get behind you. Keep everything in front of you. Ball goes up, you bat it down to the ground. Well, this week, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell comes to you at a special time of 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. The Red Sox and the Indians both already into the postseason. They've got a spot laid out for them. And we could very well see them again in October. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 with baseball tonight and Sunday night countdown. You talked about size. Number 87, Mitchell, is 6'5". Number one, Stephen Guidry, is 6'4". Now, I would put them on the same side. That, I would do that. It, it doesn't look like right now nope. Joe Moorhead's doing that because he's got Guidry at the top of the screen and then three other receivers down low. Josh Allen coming off the right edge. They'll double team him as Fitzgerald leaks out to the other side. And he will not get the throw off. Boogie Watson took him down to end the first half. Boogie Watson's having a good game. I don't think that they looked at the scouting report. He was going to be a factor, but he showed out tonight. I'll leave it at 7 right after this short break. Chris Cotter and Emmanuel Acho will join you from the studio with the halftime report. We got Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. 14th ranked Mississippi State on the road tonight in the Commonwealth, and we are all even at seven and a piece. The Bulldogs and the Cats as we get set to start the second half. Beth Mowens, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman is with us. So Kentucky has really shown up tonight, and they are hanging right in there with Mississippi State. That was a big question for me. Uh, what Kentucky team would come? Can they come in all phases, show up special teams, offense, defense? Right now, they're bringing it. Can they do it for another half? If you let Mississippi State hang around, Eventually, something big is going to happen. Let's take a look at the Wildcats. They've held Mississippi State to just 35 yards on the ground. Yeah, and you got to block the big guy in the middle. And that's what they've been able to do early on, be able to get some movement, go right down the teeth of the defense. And Benny Snell made some big yards early in this football game. And you know what? Defensively, can you get to the quarterback? Can you disrupt this offense, make them do things they can't do? And early on, I think they totally disrupted Nick Fitzgerald in this game. This was the last play, kind of a message statement right there by the Kentucky defense. And, you know, can you get something drummed up to give your team a spark? Fitzgerald's done it over the years. See if he can come out in the second half and do it today. They were held to really just the one scoring drive, uh, an 80-yard drive of over eight minutes. Fitzgerald capped it off with the run. Down on the field, Rocky? Yeah, I just, just got done talking to Joe Moorhead, the uh, Mississippi State coach. He said, look, we're killing ourselves getting behind the sticks with a penalty. He said that was a major emphasis. They talked about that at halftime. See if they come out and do it. 
in offense, top 10 in the country in total yards, rush yards, scoring. How much of that will they show here in the second half? But Cheryl tripped up after a short gain. Darius West has made some nice plays out of the secondary tonight. You know, when I watched film of Mississippi State, when I watched Kansas, Kansas State game, 370 total rushing yards between Fitzgerald and Hill. Today, they have been quiet. They have not asserted themselves at the line of scrimmage. And right now, Kentucky feels like they have an advantage. Just 32 yards for those guys. Third and five. Fitzgerald gets it out quick. First down throw to Mitchell. Gain of eight. When those plays happen, you see the tempo. Trying to get something going. Finally get a pass for a conversion on third down. Green returns here to start this third quarter. Kylan Hill in the backfield with Fitzgerald. Rain really starting to pick up here as this half started. You seem to have a problem, uh, Breeden, what's coming in from the side? Play clock is down under five, and they're going to be forced to call a timeout. Time out. What appeared to be a communication a issue. Yeah, Back in a moment. Here at Kentucky. And some confusion before the snap on that last play. Yeah, you get a first down. They run up to the line of scrimmage. You got plenty of time to get this going. They change the formation. The communication comes in. One of the offensive linemen don't get it. Williams is frustrated. Uh, again, coming out of halftime, you should have these adjustments ready. You should come out clean on your first drive. You, you got to get going. Total yardage. So far, well under what they have shown through the first three games. Certainly this their biggest challenge. And Fitzgerald wrapped up by Tamir Dubose right at the line. I don't know if I've seen a defense this year take away the north-south interior rush lanes from Nick Fitzgerald the way Kentucky has tonight. Yeah, the strength is in the middle. Uh, Elton Jenkins, number 74, the center, arguably one of the best centers in the country. He got pushed back on that play. Kentucky taking it strong to him up front, like I said. Greg Island, false start. False start. Fourth Offense. one of the night 55. for the O-line. penalty, second down. That's his second of the game. And again, you talk about who's in front of you. You know, Josh, Josh Allen is a scary player, and I'm sure he points his finger and he sees it. And that's, he's worried about it. that's, you're in the head of a player right now who's young, a sophomore. He's trying to get off the ball, and he's not listening to the snap count. Second and 14, Fitzgerald dropped by Mitchell. Couldn't hold on. You know, Mississippi State, they rolled over Stephen F. Austin to open the season. They went on the road to K-State, took the crowd out of that one quickly, yeah. and then went back home for another blowout. This really the first adversity in a hostile environment for them all season. They set the tone with the run against K-State. They had to fall back on that. Last week it was the passing game. Today, what's the identity for Mississippi State? Kentucky is disrupting their whole offensive scheme. Fitzgerald fires it downfield, and it is another drop. This time off the chest of Stephen Guidry, and it's fourth down. I was never a fan of wearing gloves in the rain, and finally Guidry's deciding to take those off. When it's wet, look, he's trying to dry his hands off on the towel before he pulls in the air. You got to be able to get that and see that ball in. Allen, look, he's coming off the edge. Fitzgerald feels him just in time, but that was a beautiful throw. Guidry, the, the leader of the receiver position, has to come up with that ball, and you saw him rip those gloves off. When it's raining, those gloves are useless. Steady rain again here in Lexington. Tucker Day with a nice punt. 
coverage is downfield. And this will set the Cats back inside their own 10-yard line for their first possession. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by KFC's new 10-piece chicken feast. And T-Mobile, America's most loved wireless brand. Join the Uncarrier today. Well, it was a good day for Rocky over at Keeneland yesterday. Rocky, I don't know if the same can be said for your steed, Sonny. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that horse doesn't want to be ridden anytime soon. I had a little extra weight than he's used to, uh, but he was 100-pound jockeys. But big thanks to all those folks out of Keeneland. I'm from Cincinnati, been down to Keeneland a bunch of times, but never got out on the track. So, uh, again, kudos to those folks for making a cool thing happen. Sneed with a first down run. Did you pick up any pointers for the uh, the Bluegrass Stakes coming up next week? Oh boy, here he is in the jockey room, folks, getting ready. That, that's how the pros get ready, Beth, right there. <laughs> My question is, is there a horse chiropractor in the building? You just <laughs> retired the three-year-old stud that was trying to get in the Kentucky Derby this year. Broke his back. He don't have a chance anymore, Ath. He's done. Hopefully his insurance policy was high. That's all I got to say, because that horse is done. Too big, too big to be Rocky the jockey. He was an outrider there. What do you guys think about the outfit, though? <laughs> <laughs> Only a guy like you could have pulled that off, Rocky. That was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, we had a lot of fun here. And obviously, it was the yearling sale going on at Keelan here this week here. And here's the book, guys. If we want to, you know, bid on some horses and maybe get pull a pot together and pick a winner, there's been over $370 million worth of horses sold. And just two years ago, Justified was sold for 500 grand. Wow. Never had a saddle on it. Somebody put down half a million bucks, and a couple years later, triple crown. Somebody said you were throwing around your dollars. Those NFL <laughs> dollars, baby. Easy now. <laughs> Setting up Bowden. He's got another first down. And before the fall meet begins October 5th over at Keeneland, Keeneland the Kentucky football team is trying to get to 4-0. 2-0 in the SEC. It would be the first time they would get that done in 41 years if they can pull off the upset at home tonight. Benny Snell made some noise in the first quarter. He was quiet in the second. He's deep in the pistol. Wilson underneath. Catch is made for a short gain. Abram with the tackle of Bowden after a three-yard pickup. And when they're passing, listen, it, it's not take your time. The, the pressure is coming. Simmons is picking up steam late in the second quarter, now in the third quarter, trying to make a difference at the defensive line position. Trips left. Snell running away from Montez Sweat. And he's got a first down out across midfield. It's about patience. I know he's gritty and he's aggressive, but watch this. Just let your linemen do their job, hide behind, and the outside becomes wide open. This is the skill set you're starting to see from Snell, starting to pick up momentum now in the second half. Fifth all-time in rushing at Kentucky. He is two yards away from moving up a spot to number four to pass Mark Higgs. Not this time. Beth, we just a minute ago heard some chants of Benny, Benny down here from the UK faithful. You talked about the confidence for Benny. It was during a, uh, a meeting with some local reporters that he said, you know, I'm going to run on any team. This offense is not afraid of any opponent. Well, Mississippi State heard that. That became some locker room fodder for them, put up on the billboard. And, of course, social media had to get involved, as you would expect. Incomplete on the throw. It was his counterpart, Kylan Hill who responded to that and then Benny responded to Kylan and that set up some uh, pregame fireworks and pushing and shoving at midfield and we may have more pushing and shoving right here in a penalty flag. 
after the play was over, a sportsmanlike conduct foul, number 20, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down, that's number 20's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Joe Moorhead is looking out on the field like we're looking at our uh, two deeps here. There's no number yeah, 20 there. It, it may have been number 10, Leo Lewis. It would have been third down and 11 instead of that first and 10 Kentucky. Wilson fakes the toss, looking for his toss. Reached over the head of the DB to snag it. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. I've been waiting for this young man to make a play. Watch this. The defender sees it all the way. Grabs his face. Look at he just leaps over and pulls it in. That's a great catch. CJ Conrad finally in the red zone area making big plays. He came up. I got to see him yesterday. Coached this guy when he was an upcoming rising junior coming out of Ohio. Unbelievable time for him. Great play. Direct snap to A.J. Rose. Pushing his way down to the five-yard line. Thompson and Lewis with the tackles. Again, a four, second and goal. Drives aided by a couple of Mississippi State penalties. And Kentucky looking for the lead. You go heavy on the top, try to distract here. Quarterback run is a big play down the deep red zone. Wilson on the delay, down inside the one, third and goal. Is this Snell time? I'll tell you what. He's not coming in yet. They got a big fullback coming in. Looks like Rose is in the backfield. Ah. Oh, no. Look at the pack. Look at the guys running in for Mississippi State. Snell comes in, and they got five or six guys switching out. Let's see. This is mano a mano right here. It's got him. This defense is tired right now. It's time for Kentucky to hammer away at him. Direct snap to Snell right here, possibly. Benny's got it. Benny pushing forward, and Benny is in. Touchdown, Kentucky. Attached himself to the hip of Logan Stenberg, and Logan took him home. Flags are flying. Watch this. Snell's not in the game, right? Well, you think they got a Benny Snell package? Watch him run into your screen right now. Now look at all these defenders. The big heavies are coming in the game. This is great, man. You want to talk about a guy that's changing the face of a defense. That's how you do it. Got a flag now. We still got pushing and shoving going on, Beth. Running on the field is a touchdown. After the play, a sportsman like conduct. Number 94 on the defense. At 59 points will be assessed over the ensuing kickoff. We'll have the try. Well, Rocky, you've been talking about it all night. They've been trying to goad Simmons into a penalty, and they got him there. There's no question about it, Beth. It's like every play, they're kind of jawing at him, getting a last little shove at him and pushing away and just seeing if he'll blow his top, and he did right there. Some say he's a top 10 talent. Well, that's something that'll be looked upon as a player. Composure, you know, making sure that you can keep your head in these moments, making sure that Benny gets in. Hard to see on that angle. I know he's getting good push, but this offensive line at Kentucky does a really nice job right there. C71, Stenberg. Again, it, you see a knee go down, but you can't see a football. And again, if it's not clear, they're not going to be able to overturn it. Third unsportsmanlike penalty, by the way, against Mississippi State. Yeah, that too many bodies in there. I mean, 
What a drive by Kentucky. 11 plays. They went 92 yards in five and a half minutes and a drive that was kept alive a couple of times, Anthony, by Bulldog penalties. After the review. After the review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Guys, that's a statement run. Go right into the teeth, right into the strength of this defense. That sends a message. And everybody knew it was coming, Rocky, right? That's right. He's in Wildcat. There's no guessing, right? They brought their big guys in. It was one-on-one, mano-mano. -on -one. The offensive line got a little push, and Snell took advantage of it. I got to like this kid, man. He's a fighter, man. I like the way he runs the football. Haven't had back-to-back -back wins against ranked opponents since 1977. They're working on it right now. Hey, listen, when you're in the red zone, go to your tight end, man. That's the guy to get down in that deep in that area, and then you got to send it to your top back. Snell's in the backfield. There's no question what he's trying to do. Defense is ready for it. Still punch. How do you celebrate your longest touchdown drive of the season? That's how, right there. And for Benny Snell, he ties the Kentucky record held by Randall Cobb with his 37th touchdown, all of them on the ground. Randall Cobb tweeted him early in the week. He said, records are made to be broken. Explanation point, go get it, 2-6. So you got to love that support. He's right, records are made to be broken. And Snell, by the time he's done here, he'll have all of them in his back pocket. Cats have one upset this year. They're working on another. We got a studio update. Chris Cotter. Chrisburg and looking to get to 4-0. Game day was out there bright and early, actually in the dark this morning. Kicking off the day. Eris Williams dancing in the backfield and picks up eight. Mike Edwards tripped him up. Like sidestep by Eris. Had over 100 yards rushing last week in their win over Louisiana. And of course, don't forget, there's your big matchup in front time on ABC next Saturday. Buckeyes and the uh, Nittany Lions both rolled in their games this weekend. Big one in the Big Ten East. Second and two, it's Williams again, caught in the backfield by Cash Daniel, the leading tackler, third leading tackler in the Southeastern Conference at over eight per game. And it's third and one. Cash Daniels has been a factor. Jordan Jones, number 34. These linebackers have come to play. What's Mississippi got? State got in the arsenal on third and short. Williams got it out across the 40. Gains seven more. Last year's leading rusher got beat out by Hill, who's back in the game. Somebody's got to light a spark. Right now, Williams looks like that guy. Almost broke that first down run and gets the big first down conversion. The key is the run game. Don't get it yeah. twisted with Mississippi State. They're, they're learning to get with the pass, but they've beaten everybody in the last several years. It's with the run. And they have been held to 57 yards so far tonight. Fitzgerald, the pass to Mitchell. Wrapped up by Chris Westry out to the 44. Guys, I think it's important to know right now we've not had a turnover in this game, but a close ball game, wet conditions. You got to figure as guys start to get tired, maybe get a little bit loose with that football. Defense is going to be hitting it away. Turnovers could be a huge factor here coming down the stretch. And I give a lot of credit to these young players of securing the football, not letting it happen so far. 
Kylan Hill. Of course, if you followed Mississippi State, you know that they rarely fumble the football. There are the consecutive carries without a loss for Williams, Fitzgerald, and Kylan Hill, who hasn't lost one yet. They've done an outstanding job with ball security. Here comes another third down. Last time in this formation, Rocky called the bunch in short yardage. They got outside with the back. Let's see if they change it up here and maybe have Fitzgerald pull it out and let him do the running. Stop this time. 50% tonight on third down and fourth down here around midfield. Good job. Scoop's on fire. He, he's fired up. He knows they're short. He, he's intense, man. He, he knows he's got a good defense this year. These guys are confident right now the way they're playing. They force another punt from Tucker Day. Bouvier back at his own 10. It is a short one. And it will be downed around the 18-yard line, just a 32-yard punt. A touchdown lead for Kip. Well, it's extra yard for Teachers Week. It's a week-long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its extra yard for teachers platform. You can visit the College Football Playoff Foundation website, cfp-foundation.org, to learn more about extra yard for Teachers Week and see how you can get involved. Benny Snell, 15 carries, 91 yards, and both Kentucky touchdowns tonight to tie the school record. He'll get the call here, and Benny also has a shout out to a couple of educators. I want to give a special shout out to Miss Park. Uh, she was my Spanish teacher. You helped me so much, and you always gave me hope. You taught me to never give up. I want to give another shout out to Coach Minnie. You was always on me. You stayed on my butt for my grades and to always work hard off the field. And I appreciate that. Go Cats. A tremendous career here on and off the field for Benny. What an ambassador for Kentucky football he's been. Terry Wilson taking a shot deep. And it's picked off by Brian Cole, the nickelback. First turnover of the night. Well, Rocky called it, you know, as you get into this game and you looked at the stats on Wilson, he really hadn't run for a lot of yards, hadn't made a lot of completions, and at some point he was going to have to make a play, and he went for a jugular here, and he made a crucial mistake. This is not what you want down the sidelines. you got to get that ball where only your guy can catch it, and he gets, uh, gets that short throw, and now that attracts the coverage and that was Brian Cole the star backer so that matchup was advantageous with a receiver but he underthrows it and a linebacker is able to make the play his fourth interception as well as two fumbles lost this year for Terry Wilson it's a short field for Nick's, uh, Nick Fitzgerald they have one drive all night of over six plays can they get something going? Hill out of the backfield in the flat and across midfield to the 45, bumped out by Mike Edwards. And a studio update with Chris Cotter. Thank you, Chris. Of course, Kentucky already has an SEC win over Florida. Fitzgerald's incomplete. And this is the SEC debut for new head coach Joe Moorhead, who's been successful everywhere he's been, most recently as the offensive coordinator at Penn State. Helping engineer a Big Ten championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl a couple seasons ago. Just had a turnover, Beth, right? What do you got to do? The defense has to help your team out. Put it in an adverse situation. Can you get off the field on third down? Williams with some work to do to get there, and he's got it. 
Eris Williams will move the chains. He's starting to become a little bit of a playmaker, Beth, in the second half here. A couple nice runs, big conversion on third down earlier. Now they utilize him in the pass game. Here's a guy that got beat out as a starter. Now they're using him throughout all the games, but he's ready to go when his number is called. I love this about that crafty vet. Senior will stay in the backfield alongside Fitzgerald. Just a four-man rush. Fitzgerald with some room to run down to the 25 and another first down. And that's the danger of playing man-to-man. -man. Your back turns to a running quarterback like that, opens up the lane, picks up the first down. And who's the spy if, if you're going to do that, right, Rocky? It looked like Cash Daniels got caught. He started dropping because he felt like maybe the pass was coming. And Nick Fitzgerald said, man, he saw all that open green. He took advantage of it. Yeah, if you're going to play a, a, a spy like that, it's important to continue to close the gap, close the gap. You get a lot of distance. It's tough to make a play. You saw him Fitzgerald make him pay. Benny Snell, the All-America candidate, breaking records with others looming in the distance. He's got both touchdown tallies tonight. <laughs> Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. They haven't had a whole lot of chances over the years to shoot off the fireworks at the pyrotechnics. They've unloaded everything in a smoky Kroger field. <laughs> a little clear down where Rocky is right now. Absolutely perfectly clear down here, Beth. And Josh Allen gets to Fitzgerald from behind. And a loss of four. He's showing you the whole repertoire. Pass rush, tackles in the box, and then the speed off the edge. Fitzgerald's no slouch. He's got speed. The tempo. I'm telling you what now. A lot of NFL player town on the field right now. He's one of them. He's showing out in this big game. And Anthony, I know they like to drop him in the covers, but boy, I'd say sick the quarterback rest of the game. He's great at it. Down at the right side is Allen. Trying to come again. And a flag down because the O-lineman Tyree Phillips was holding on to Josh for dear life. Yeah, Houston, we have a problem. Offense, number 78. 10-yard penalty. The sophomore Second Island was in there. He couldn't handle him. Now they bring in number 78, Phillips. Maybe he can get him. Josh Allen says, I'm not having that nice rip underneath technique, grabbing his jersey. He's calling penalties, he's calling offsides, and he's calling a hold as well. And they're not happy. Mississippi State up front is not having a good day. The loudest it's been all night down here on the field, guys. Second and 24. This time it's not Allen, it's Calvin Taylor with the sack. Third down and forever coming up. This entire defense is, is just making plays. Now it's 91's turn. Can you beat somebody one-on-one? -on -one? You saw 73. Williams, he was mad earlier. Well, get why? You got to come back and get refocused. You didn't give up the sack last time. You're going to be mad. As a player, you got to make sure you do your job. And right now is a complete debacle up front for the Bulldogs. They lost 20 yards on the last two plays. And they're going to lose some more. tickets left on sale the other day and for fans that love their horses and love their cats inside Rupp Arena they are putting on a show here tonight for their football team five false starts I mean we're third and forever I'm thinking they may want to try to punt on third down Beth that's how far they are Fitzgerald, plenty of time, looking deep. Broken up down at the 10 and a flag down. 
But Jane had the coverage and a flag flying in. Kentucky, that was, the receiver was wide open. Allen caught up, but he ran into There's him. There's no so. foul on the play. Four wow. foul. They picked it up. Wow. We'll see this replay here, but. Saw the, the tight end here, Green. He runs a wheel route. He goes up. That's, that's a close one. I, I can't tell if his hands are on him. He doesn't get around. Puts his arms up in front of him. Green actually had the separation. Fitzgerald underthrows him and brings Allen back into the mix here on that play. Stoops throws a timeout here. I don't know if they had enough guys on the field or what. Yeah, they were short a guy. Timeout. Kentucky. They had players running on the field late. Because if that penalty had held, it would have been a first down. The defense was still out there. Yeah, I mean, look, you got all these guys. There's just too many, and they're all running. Too many players right now. Down lead for Kentucky early in this fourth quarter. And after having a first down at the 25-yard line, negative plays push the Bulldogs all the way back into their own territory. The officials picked up a flag on what would have been a pass interference penalty for a first down. And the boot is away, and Bouvier secures it at the 14. Let's check in on that Oklahoma scare. Chris Cotter? Chris, let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. Other than that Oklahoma game, it's been uh, pretty good for the, the favorites and the ranked teams today. Army, wow, that is an unbelievable game right now. That's, that's almost as good, good as ours. That would be huge. Benny Snell, the first down run of 18 yards, but a flag down behind him. Holden, 52 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. It's Drake Jackson. And he's trying to make his case that he didn't hold, but that's unfortunate. That was a big run right there. Obviously, the hole had something to do with it, but you want to go to the well now, backed up. You got to watch now. You don't want to put this thing in a quarterback's hands. You know, Wilson's effective. Second and short, third and short. You get backed up, you have to be smart as a play caller. Offensive coordinator Eddie Grand for this young QB. Shined on the road at the Swamp in their upset of Florida. Snell taken down, a negative yardage run. That was Brian Cole who also has an interception tonight. Guys, I think it's important to note right now, Jeffrey Simmons, maybe the best defensive tackle in football, is not on the field. He's over on the sideline, helmet not even strapped up. I know Shoup talked about the defense quarter, about they like to rotate guys, get fresh legs. You can look at it two ways. They're saving them for the, a big finish, or he's not in there and not as effective as they want him to be, but he's a difference maker. Loss of five, second and 21. So I, Wilson out of his own end zone. I'd want Simmons in right here, push up against the goal line. Wilson, the deep ball, incomplete into double coverage, and here come the flags. Intended for Dorian Baker, it was McLaurin and Danzler in coverage. Pass interference, defense, number 41, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. You see both players try to get their head around. Wilson's very uh, lucky here. He, he got bailed out. This wasn't open. He didn't see the safety tracking that football. If he doesn't underthrow that football, I'm not sure a penalty happens. Right. 13 penalties, 114 yards 
That is more than double their offensive rushing yardage tonight. The direct snap again, the Wildcats smell out to the 20. Snell is so powerful. He just ran in behind his own lineman, number 64, and like knocked him to the ground. I mean, the kid just, he's reckless abandonment. I mean, he's kind of in the zone right now in this game. I mean, I haven't seen any stoppage in his in his game so far, and you got to keep feeding this kid because he's ready. He's key to break one here at some point. Averaging five yards a carry tonight. He's back up to 90 yards on the evening. Snell, and he's caught by Jeffrey Simmons oh, in guess, the backfield. Guess who's back in the game, Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> Big 94. Listen. He makes an impact all the time. It, it, this kid's scary good. I mean, it's hard. If you block one, put one guy on him, you're making a mistake. He, he, he begs for two blockers, and if you don't, he'll make you pay. Big third down now. How risky does Eddie Grand get? Two deep balls, one got intercepted earlier, and then that last third down, threw one up, got a pass interference. What's the level right now that Kentucky goes on offense? Man-to-man -man coverage for the Bulldogs. Pressure coming from Shoup. Wilson looking to run, and he's got nowhere to go. They brought the heat, Montez Sweat. Gets the sack, third of the night for Mississippi State, and Wilson slow to get up. He is a little limpy. And, you know, Rocky, we talked about the pass rush against a guy like Wilson. When you come at him, you've got to be very good at really squeezing him in to that pocket and not let him get out. It's a nice job by containing him and keeping him from running for a first down. That's right, they call it keeping him in the net. You want to get after the pass rusher, but press that pocket. Nice job. Max Duffy punting out of his own end zone. Mixon will return it and will only get a yard. Good coverage by Kentucky, but it's another short field. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the Lexus RX, featuring pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, standard, and direct TV. More for your thing. That's our thing. Yeah, the unpleasantness started pre-game and has carried out through the evening. Good news for Cat fans, that's the quarterback, Terry Wilson, who got up off the trainer's table and went over to pick up the phone to talk to the guys upstairs. Looks like he may be able to re-enter. But right now, it's Nick Fitzgerald from near midfield, first and 10. In this matchup of unbeaten, gets away from Josh Allen and picks up a few yards. Here's the injury to Wilson. A whole lot of bunchy stallings. Ouch. Right there. Right there. So Lyman falls on his knee after the play. Sometimes you get a quick, just kind of scares you almost when those things happen around the knee area. And hopefully he's going to be back uh, next series. Big story so far. The Kentucky defense limiting Mississippi State to just 60 yards rushing. They average over 300 per game. They got nine minutes to change that. Here comes Allen again, and he gets to Fitzgerald. Uh. Rocky, this is what we call a guy that's making some money tonight in this <laughs> game. It doesn't matter who's playing tackle. They cannot quick get back quick enough to stop him. And nobody's helping these poor tackles tonight. I mean, he, listen, you got a sophomore tackle. Let's get somebody in there to chip or do something, or Josh Allen's going to wreck your day. They better do something. They better chip. They better slide his way something, because he is in the head of number 55 right now. Third and 15. The double team on Allen, buying some time. The turnover for Kentucky. Tyrell Giant with the pick. Well, 
Well, the question mark with Nick Fitzgerald is, can he find the receiver and get an accurate pass? You see Mixon right there finds the open middle. He just overthrows the football. It's wide open. You got to stand in that pocket. You got to knock it down. Sales on him. Interception. Kentucky with another big play, Beth, on defense. First turnover for the Cats on the takeaway. And into the belly of Benny. Snell breaking free inside the 10. Touchdown, Kentucky. Kentucky touchdown record. His third of the night gives him 38 for his career as he goes 36 yards. Line has been fantastic, but Benny Snell Jr. has lived up to the talk this week, and we said he'd break one. He finally did. Fresh off the turnover, and Snell strikes again. You can say what you want about this young man. He might talk a little trash once in a while, but if you give him a seam just like that, he'll make you pay. Benny for Heisman, I'm buying that right now. We're coming up tonight on Sports Center after the Arizona State-Washington game on ESPN. How about Herbie and Fowler breaking down the Pac-12 showdown? Old Dominion, the big upset of Virginia Tech. Reaction from Tigers, big third round. And I'm guessing they may be talking a little bit about Benny. Three touchdown runs tonight. And he's right at his season average of 125 yards. And he has pushed Kentucky out to the two-touchdown lead. And now a lot of work for Mississippi State. Just under eight minutes to go. Let's check in with Chris. Offside, 89 on the kicking team. Five yard penalty added to the end of the return. First down. The numbers tonight on Nick Fitzgerald, just 20 yards rushing. The buck 38 through the air and the one interception that last one cost him as on the very next play, Benny Snell went 36 yards on a touchdown run. Fitzgerald incomplete. Busted up by Devontae Robinson, intended for Austin Williams. You know, the games that I've watched Fitzgerald, there's been something he's been able to hang his hat on, right? Whether it be running the football, last week passing. Tonight, Kentucky's defense now, they came to play. They're dialed in. Yep. They've made the stops. They haven't been able to generate any offense behind the one man this Mississippi State team has to do it in Fitzgerald. Defensive coordinator Matt House has turned Fitzgerald into a passer. Kylan Hill. They've really only had that one sustained drive, the touchdown drive, 15 plays back in the first quarter that went 80 yards. Nothing else with a drive of over 25 yards all night. That third down, there's only one man to call, right? If you may dial up number 41. They got this bunch set, just trying to get them out of it as far outside as possible. Fitzgerald got rid of it quickly, but Robinson read it all the way. And it's fourth down. Been impressed. It's been non-stop relentlessness right now, and Fitzgerald's pushing away the punt team. 
looks like they may try to go for this. Interesting call, Beth. Six minutes left. Fourth and three from inside their own 40. Kentucky looking for the call here. Did they call? Kentucky called timeout. Wow. Interesting. Tommy. Tonight on ABC, fourth rank Ohio State, tenth rank Penn State. It's the whiteout at Beaver Stadium, Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo next weekend on ABC. Outstanding offenses on display in that one, both over 50 points per game. Wade Askins, Trace McSorley head to head. So we're coming back to a fourth down and three. Play the game, Beth. This is it right here. Kentucky's got to come up big. Fitzgerald will hand it off, and the Cats were in the backfield, led by Jordan Jones. And they appear to be short. Yeah, I, I'm a little shocked at the play. I get it. Mississippi State, they're known for their power running. First down, Kentucky. If anything, Rocky, I'm pulling this out. I know he's reading it, but you have the third phase of passing as well. Get him out on the perimeter in space. That's a tough one. It almost looked like Kentucky was ready for it. No, I, I agree with you. Either get that ball out in space. If you're going to run one, I say you give it to the hands of your big six foot five quarterback and see if he can get some yards. Questionable call there. You got to go back to the days of disco. The last time they've partied with a 2 and 0 record in the SEC, Anthony. Well, uh, you know what? What they're going to be partying. Get ready for the Benny Snell show right now. With six minutes and 40 seconds, can Mississippi State find a way to stop them? He's moved up a spot to number four all time in rushing. He has set the new school record for most touchdowns. And uh, we've got another upset brewing elsewhere, don't we, Chris? Nice on the Benny Hill. We were trying to come up with other famous Bennies. You know, obviously Benny and the Jets. Benny Hill's a good one, the British comedian. And we're saying UK also. You, yeah. get, you can easily get mixed up. <laughs> Excellent job, Beth, by you tonight. Getting it good. Oh, nothing to laugh about in Benny Snell's game tonight. He's in the Wildcat right here. <laughs> Held to about a yard. And again, it's been heavy run. Your third down. Do you, do, you, do you put your quarterback here who hasn't thrown a pass or completed a pass in a while here to try to convert this third down, or you just hand it off to, to Snell and potentially get a first down if you can get it or pin him back with a punt? Definitely don't throw up a 50-50 ball right here. No. Wilson will let that clock bleed down. Snell. Up the gut. He's going to be a couple yards shy. Uh, you may seriously think about going for this, too, with the running game that you have. You're up two touchdowns. The running back that you got in the backfield, Beth. Maybe impose your will yeah. on one of the best defensive lines in football. And they're not going to try to surprise anybody. Fourth and two. Snell, first down. Got the right edge and tumbles down inside the 25. We've talked about Snell and the great job that he's done, but I'll tell you what now. This offensive line for Kentucky, nobody gave these guys yeah. a shot coming into this game to block this defense up front for Mississippi State. They're taking it to them. They turn on this tape. They're going to be proud of these young men up front for Kentucky. Anthony, it's one thing to beat a team. It's another thing to beat them at their own game. Mississippi State came in here thought they were the most physical team. The opposite thing happened here tonight. 182 yards rushing, and Snell to it. Unbelievable. Benny Snell 
for his fourth touchdown of the night. But as they like to say in the Commonwealth, Snell, yeah. Making sure here that he's in. Two guys trying to bring him down. He extends the ball, his body's on top of a defensive player. With the legs in the air, that looks good to me. That looks good to me, man. That, that's a heck of a run there. 165 yards behind Watkins and Price, Stenberg and Jackson, Bunchy Stallings, Asafo J. Putting it to 14th ranked Mississippi State. As they inch closer to that magic number of 41. It's been 41 years since they've beaten back-to-back -back ranked opponents and have started out in the SEC 2-0. Oh. Look at this hole. I mean, really? That's a gaping hole. Drake J uh, Jackson at the center pins his guys. Bunchy Stallings kicks out his guy. I mean, look, Snell is not a little running back. This kid is 5'11", 225 pounds, and he's running through holes as big as buses for crying out loud. Of course, the other 41 would be Snell's defensive buddy, Josh Allen, who has been leading the charge and holding Mississippi State to just 56 yards rushing. You know, when your sister's already in the pose, his sister, Maisha, is in the WNBA. Josh has been following in her footsteps, and as you guys have alluded to, possibly moving up in the NFL draft on a night like tonight. There's no possibly. He'll be there, Ben, <laughs> trust me. I'll put some money on that one. Put some of that horse money on it. Ray Rock, there you go. I'm pulling my money out of the horse. I'm putting it on Snell. <laughs> 28 unanswered points. Yeah, for the Cats. Kid's been incredible. You know, we talk about Snell on offense. Allen has just showed up tonight. Pass rush, tackling, run game, coverage. This kid can do it all. Now listen, this is a dying breed in the NFL. Those three, four linebackers, teams like Pittsburgh, the Jets, they're screaming for a guy that can play like a Von Miller type. Someone that can come off the edge like a Khalil Mack. I don't know if he's at that level, but tonight he's played as, as good as any outside linebacker or defensive end I've seen in the SEC. Incomplete from Fitzgerald. Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper both like him as well. In fact, McShay has him ranked as his top OLB. I'll buy that. <laughs> I mean, hey, <laughs> no, he's up there. There's no doubt. He turn on this tape. Oh, he moved up. Look at that. He moved up a couple spots today. Active sack leaders around the country. Man, I'm telling you, just, just the simple fact that he's standing over it. Now that's how it wasn't him. Offense, number 78, five yard penalty, second down. Not the night that Joe Moorhead had hoped for thus far. And Coach Moorhead, he, he's a very cerebral guy. Not a, little, not a lot of highs, not a little lows, but I'll tell you, he's got to be aggravated with 14 penalties tonight. Yep. Didn't have the mental focus for this football team ready. And not only that, in the trenches, they lost that battle as well. And now you've got to head back home and get ready for Florida. They looking awfully good tonight. Of course, it's the return of Dan Mullen, the former head coach at Mississippi State on what will be an emotional Saturday with SEC Nation set to be there on Saturday morning. And for Kentucky, how lit will this place be next weekend with South Carolina in prime time? I mean, I'm, I'm just going to get your eyes on the top of the screen. Let me see if Josh Allen can make it happen here on third and long. Fitzgerald, good protection. Complete, almost picked to the studio. Chris Cotter. I 
Thank you very much, Chris. Fourth and 15, and Mississippi State will have to boot it away. Bounces out of bounds at midfield. Got a flag down. Illegal formation, kicking team, number 50 not on the line of scrimmage. That five yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down. We'll kick off your NFL Sunday at 10 Eastern on ESPN with Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. They'll have the story of Pat Mahomes and his rise in the NFL. And they'll also chat with former Bulldog Dak Prescott now in charge of the Dallas Cowboys. A change at quarterback, Gunnar Hoke is on for Terry Wilson. Snell is also out of the game. It's A.J. Rose in the backfield. On a night where Wilson showed some poise in the pocket, and Benny had himself a night. Four rushing touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Benny was nine carries for 73 yards. And they didn't ask a lot. <laughs> and look, he's taking pictures before the game ends here. He's getting it done, but... What you know, is that? W Wilson... <laughs> I don't see it. He loves the camera, that's for sure. But see those numbers. He, he's creeping up. And, uh, you know, they got a lot of games left. He, he may push for Sonny Collins. I'm not going to say anything either yeah. way, but this could be a finale run for him this year. He's three full years, obviously, this would be. How about his famous great uncle, Matt Snell, back in Super Bowl three for the J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Everybody remembers no doubt. Broadway Joe, but it was Snell who got the job done with uh, their only touchdown. And 121 yards rushing that Super Bowl Sunday in Miami. Benny carrying on the name quite nicely. 165 yards. And setting a new school record for TDs. And that, those are the guys you need to shake hands. The offensive line. Give them the credit because those guys, I'll tell you, they're going to turn on this tape and they're going to be really happy what they did. Two stars right there. Yeah. Enjoy it tonight. And now the challenge becomes, okay, how do we refocus and how do we handle some success here. That's they're a great two, point. They're two and zero oh now in the SEC. Everybody talking about how good Georgia is in the East. Is Kentucky a contender? And you got a pretty decent South Carolina club coming in here next weekend. Just like you talk about shaking off bad losses and re refocusing, it's the same for winning. And this is a team that hadn't had a lot of success, like you said. And they got to be able to come enjoy this for the night and get back to work tomorrow because, look, what's the big picture for Kentucky, right? Are you trying to just get to a bowl game or are you trying to make some noise in the SEC? Number 10 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, this is not the focus you want to have for a football team. This, is, this has been a very, very good defense for Mississippi State. But Joe Moorhead cannot be happy with the, the level of lack of focus from his players tonight. Not just on, you know, you get holds, you got things like that, but. Well, well, Anthony, it's uh, 15, now 16 penalties. Four of those are unsportsmanlike conduct. Uncharacteristic of the Bulldogs. And Anthony, Joe Moore has a very soft-spoken guy. Does someone, some coach need to step up and kind of get on these guys a little bit? Yeah, who's the enforcer? You know, the, yeah. the disciplinarian. I mean, Coach Moorhead's smart as heck. There's no doubt about it, but tonight, run out of bounds. Rose, very good talent himself. We talked about him earlier. He had a couple big runs in the first half, but he's another back they really like. Nice compliment. And there's a there's a pass rusher we didn't see much of tonight, Beth. That's Montez Sweat. 
He's another premier guy in the SEC, but tonight in the showcase game, Josh Allen was the premier pass rusher for Kentucky. Second three. Kentucky wants to just try and stay in bounds here. And keep it on the ground. Rose keeps the legs churning. First and goal, Kentucky. A reminder, get ready for next Saturday night in the Whiteout in Beaver Stadium with the Nittany Lions hosting the Buckeyes. Saturday night football presented by Wells Fargo, 7.30 Eastern, also live on the ESPN app. Penn State got the Buckeyes a couple years ago. Last year, went back to Ohio State, went their way. Classy Coach Stoops here, starting the clock go down. They'll take a couple of knees, and Susan Lax is going to be busy tonight. That's their <laughs> sports information director alongside Benny Snell. I think there might be an interview or two in store. He always takes great care of us whenever we come to town. Four rushing touchdowns for Benny. What a and win. 165 yards. I'll tell you, Mississippi State is a very good team. This is a big win for Kentucky. Kentucky fans should be real happy about this one. 1977. That's the last time the Cats were 2-0 and and Seattle slew. Was your Kentucky Derby winner. Well, they're 2-0 again in the league. Both of them upsets of ranked opponents.